Hey there, I'm going to show you how to search library databases to find an academic journal article. So if you're in a class and you've been assigned a research paper and you've been asked to use a scholarly article or you've been told to use scholarly sources, peer-reviewed articles, academic journals, uh, this is where you need to go. You need to come to the library's website. Uh, there's a URL for it up here, or you can navigate to the website through Cabrini Learn or th through Cabrini One. Uh, but once you get yourself here, under this heading of Research Tools, you'll see where we have our databases. So if you click into Databases, you'll see our long list here of databases that we have for our students. They're organized over here, A to Z or you can come in and check out uh, the subject that you're in. So you can find a business database, uh, an English database, a uh, communications database. Uh, but let's imagine today that you are in an education class. So you are taking a class in the education department and you need to find research for a uh, topic of your choosing. So here's our databases that we have for education. Uh, there's Education Research Complete, there's ERIC. Uh, the one that we recommend the most is Education Research Complete. So if you go into Research Complete, looks like this. It's an EBSCOhost platform. Uh, you'll see that we have a variety of selection of EBSCOhost supported databases and you'll know which one you're in by uh, the title being listed up here. You can go ahead and select other databases as well. If you want to search more than one at, worst, at once, you can search as many uh, EBSCO databases at a time as you wish. So you could think if your subject um, also crosses into psychology, you could add a psychology uh, database or two. You could add communications if you're thinking about um, communications in the classroom in some way or media representation. Uh, and then there's this one up here, Academic Search Complete, which is our multidisciplinary database covering um, issues, current events, and topics that don't necessarily fit into just one topic or it might just be in there because it's um, part of that large database. Okay, so we're we'll gonna just stick with Education Research Complete for now, so I'll go ahead and say okay, and you can see that that's where we're searching right there. So if we're in education class and we're asked to pick a topic, you would wanna find something that's interesting to you, uh, and you might wanna start thinking about the classroom and maybe um, something that you've noticed or something that um, you've thought about before. So you might say, for instance, um, you know, you see a lot of cell phone use or discussions about whether cell phones belong in the classroom. So you might say, think, I'm interested in um, the topic of cell phones in the classroom. Now that's a topic and you want to think about formulating it into a question. What is it that you want to know or find out about cell phones in the classroom? Are you interested in uh, cell phones as something that's negative? Uh, how is it harming or hurting uh, the educational process? Uh, is it a distraction? What are some strategies for dealing with that distraction? Or you might be interested in looking at it from a positive point of view. Uh, what are ways that cell phones can be a positive instructional tool, for example? So if we start out with just the, cell, the search for cell phones, and you hit search here, you'll see that we get about 5,000 results, which is a lot of results, more than you can probably go through as well at one time, right? So to start narrowing down this search, we can actually add a term, which seems counterintuitive, but when you add terms, you're narrowing your subject. So you might say, I'm interested in the topic of cell phones and, um, you might just say the classroom. What's happening when the cell phone is in the classroom? Okay, so now we've narrowed it down all the way from 5,000 to 487, which is a nice um, drop. So hopefully everything now has to do with more specifically with classrooms and education. So you can also, you could add in other terms or be even more specific, or you can come over here and set some limits here. So you might say, you know, I've been assigned to use scholarly journals. So if you click this button, 
that will help to ensure that everything you're seeing here is from an academic journal and not published in a magazine or a trade journal or something like that. So we've cut our list down again about in half once more. So we might start just looking at what we're seeing in our list. So the first one we see sort of um, one that's on the distraction ends of things. Um, what is negative about a cell phone in the classroom? So I might say that one looks good. I might explore that. You can click on it to see more about the article. There's an abstract here, which is a summary of what's happening or what they did, what the research was about in the, in the article. So if after reading the summary uh, and also looking at these search terms here to see how the, the uh, article has been classified, you could say, okay, I think I want to uh, use this article. So you could send it to your Google Drive. You could print it. If you're here in the library, you can print for free. If you haven't used all your printing up yet for the semester, obviously you can email or save. Uh, what you can do if you're still in the research process is add to folder and it'll sort of hold on to it for you so you can keep looking if you're not ready uh, to commit totally to this article yet. Uh, so you might, if you're interested and you think this one looks good, I want to find more like it, you might say, okay, what subject terms here make it an, artic an article that I'm interested in? Okay, so the aspect of it uh, the fact that it's in a university. Or you might say, you know, I don't really want it to be in college, so maybe I want to come up here and say high school uh, because I'm more interested in whether we should be using or banning cell phones in high school than I am in college. So I might come up here, and now I'm down to just 22 articles, which is nice. I can really look through that list. And we see here, we have one here that looks like it's about integrating or using the cell phone in the classroom, which is nice. Uh, or we could also come down and say, okay, here's one that's about how maybe it's negative. So I might add both of these to my folder if I'm interested in them. So I'm clicking them and I'm just putting them in the folder so that I can look at them more later, okay? Uh, so obviously I'm going to say I'm not as interested in this one here. Uh, cancer and radiation is outside the scope of what I'm doing. But this one might be interesting. Three different roles, five different aspects, and then we're looking at different policies. And then I say that's interesting, but then I notice it's China and I'm not as interested in um, overseas schools, so I'll keep looking. And then this one looks good. Um, student reflective perceptions of high school educational cell phone technology use. That's great. It's a little bit old. Now, 2011 might not be old in another search. Uh, if you're doing a totally different topic. So you want to think about your topic and what's new and cutting edge and what's maybe old, depending on what you're searching for. You might come over here and you can select a date range. You want to make sure it sticks. You might say, you know, I really just want the last three years. And now you're down to just nine results. So you might be worried, you know, nine results is a little small. Um, but you could look through and see what else you could find. Here's one about disruption. Um, and you could keep looking science and learning. Now you might notice as you're putting these in the folder, some of them are PDFs or full text, which means you can read the article right away. And some of them are going to be ILL. So you might say, oh, I'm really interested in science teaching and learning, uh, but I can't open it up and look at it. So you have to click on request to ILL enter your information here, uh, submit a request, and it'll take us about three business days to get this article emailed to you. So keep that in mind. If you're interested in using ILL, you're totally welcome to, but it does take uh, a process, a little more of a process. So if you don't want ILL articles to come up, you might say, you know what, I just want full text. That will eliminate any article you can't use right away. And now you're just down to three. Now these three might be really good, um, but they might not be enough. 
uh, or they might not fit your needs. So this one we had already had in our folder. Here's another one that's really interesting about adolescent relationships and identity. That's sort of outside of maybe how it's working in the classroom, but it would maybe talk about how the cell phone is affecting um, you know, growing up student attitudes, um, anxiety, psychology. So maybe that would help broaden your paper a little bit so you could add that. And then you might come back up here and say, um, I didn't get enough. So I might be want to remove a term. Maybe classroom is, is keeping some articles out that could be in there. So maybe I just want to know about cell phones and high school. And I'll try that search again without classroom. Now I'm up to 26, which is good. I have more to look at. But now we're getting outside of the classroom again. Uh, so um, you would probably want to search and keep trying different searches here. You might say cell phones and uh, teaching tools to find out how they're being used in the classroom. Or um, you could look at one that's already in your folder, come back here, open them up, and look at some of these that you liked and say, oh, look at this. This one was one of my best ones that I found that looked the most promising in terms of being helpful. It's high school, it's math, it's about the phone. Uh, they have it tagged with mobile communication systems in education. Let me click on that. And now I've gotten a lot more. So you could come back here. Now you notice your limits are gone. So you might go back to full text. You might come to scholarly and peer reviewed. And here we have uh, some more, using it to support geometry, um, mobile learning mode, and the traditional classroom teaching. So once we found a different subject to use, it opened up our search a lot more. So I, this is the, what research looks like. It's not a straightforward boom, boom, boom kind of process, but instead you want to try different things, explore different terms, keep hunting until you've gathered uh, enough that you can go through and really find the articles that are going to shine in your paper. So once you're in your folder and you found a few articles to look through, you can open them up, you can read their abstracts, you can email or save them, you can actually look at the article itself and see the PDF and read it here on the screen. Uh, and then you should, so you could go through your entire art folder selection, choose the ones that you want, maybe you want all of them, and you can actually email or save the entire group. And one nice thing that you can do when you would email these articles to yourself, you can email them along with their citation. So you'll get their citation and the article that you can use. Okay, so that's database searching. As always, if you have any questions about this process or you're not finding articles that you find to be helpful or useful, please get in touch with iLibrarian. You can talk to us on chat, email, or call our reference desk. Okay, thanks.